Good evening. On behalf of New Song Church, welcome to our worship at home. This evening's worship service will conclude with a celebration of communion, a celebration of our Lord's Last Supper. So if you would like to participate in that, I would encourage you to pause the video to set up for yourself uh, some bread and some wine or some crackers and juice, whatever will help you to participate more fully and more importantly, whatever will help you to remember Jesus Christ. So if you need to, pause the video and then come right back. Let us begin our worship in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, though the sights and sounds of spring surround us, we confess that our souls remain a wintry wilderness. We have not allowed you to till the soil within us. We have turned from the harsh plow of your discipline. We have spurned the seed of circumstance dropped from your invisible hand. We have busied ourselves without regard to your future harvest. We pray that you sow the seeds of your comfort into the furrows of our days that we might experience the joy of springtime within ourselves. We pray, O oh God, for the poor, for the disposed, and for the homeless, not as abstractions, but as flesh and blood, men, women, and children who have been battered by life. Grant them food and shelter and healing. Grant them a special portion of joy. Send into their midst, O God, agents of reconciliation who are able to make your compassion real for them. We come before you this day, knowing that you are the one who brightens our lives and sustains us through the long in-between times. And we lift our prayer, O God, in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture that I will be reading this evening is from the gospel according to Matthew. It's from the 27th chapter. But before we actually begin that reading, I would like you to remember what has happened earlier in that day. You see, it had been a long day for Pilate. He had been awakened early that day and forced to deal with an angry mob who demanded the death of this guy named Jesus. Now, Pilate had interviewed Jesus. In his opinion, Jesus was a little crazy, but Nothing um, about Jesus required the death sentence. So Pilate diverted uh, an obvious disaster by being the consummate politician. He shirked his responsibility. <laughs> he handed Jesus over to Herod, who, by the way, he never really cared for, and who was really supposed to be in charge of the Jews to begin with. Situation solved. But now it's later in the day, and the angry mob is back, and they are demanding the death of Jesus. Now, at the Passover festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone they whom wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, 
Whom do you want me to release to you? Barabbas? Or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Now the chief priests and the elders had persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? And they said, Crucify him. Then Pilate asked, What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. May God bless the reading of our Holy Word. It was a traditional Passover custom for Rome to release a prisoner during the Passover. It was sort of a cross between um, a United States president um, pardoning a Thanksgiving Day turkey and the People's Choice Awards rather than the Oscars. It was supposed to be the people's choice, the crowd's choice. And the crowd chose to have Barabbas released. Give us Barabbas. And Pilate seems to almost be in shock. And so he asked them twice, then what would you have me do with Jesus? And both times they respond, Crucify him. It's quite a story. It's, it's not a comedy, it's a tragedy. And there are actually four different players in this story. There is Pilate and Barabbas, Jesus, and the crowd. One of the best ways to interpret scripture is to see where each of us fits into the story. Are we, in other words, are we to respond and act like Jesus? Or are we supposed to respond and act like Pilate? Are we supposed to be, and are we more like Barabbas? It's like studying the story of uh, the Good Samaritan. Are we supposed to be the man who is beaten on the side of the road? Are we supposed to be the priest or the Levite that passed by? Or are we supposed to be the Samaritan who acts out of character and cares for this beaten man? And so in this story, we've got these four characters. We have Pilate. And none of us can really relate to Pilate. I mean, Think about it. You know, none of us have any real political clout or political governmental authority. So we can't relate to Pilate. Neither can we play the part of Jesus. Whenever you're studying the scripture, if you, if you want to know uh, how to interpret that passage, Jesus is not you or me. We are not the Messiah. We are not divine. We are not God. We are not miracle workers. So we are never to place ourselves in the role of Jesus in these stories. And in like fashion, neither are we in this story Barabbas. I mean, Barabbas was a criminal. He was a murderer. He was guilty of insurrection. He was a political prisoner. And, and we, that's not us. Now, none of us are, are perfect, but we're not as dirty as Barabbas. Our hands may be dirty, but they're not bloody. So we are not to be Pilate, and neither can we relate to being Jesus, nor can we relate to being Barabbas. In this story, we are the crowd. Yes, we are the crowd. Like most mobs, we are easily whipped into a frenzy. And we have a choice. 
Who are we going to pick? Who do we want by our side? Do we want Barabbas? Or do we want Jesus? Do we want Barabbas the murderer? Or Jesus the healer? Who do we want? Who do we call for? Who do we pick? Barabbas is known to us by many names. Barabbas may be a friend that we meet up with after work. Barabbas may be an internet link that's hidden on our computer browser. Barabbas may be a guy we met at the bar. But here's the deal. We know how things work. You and I, we're not stupid. You and I know that when we sit in a dark room and look seriously at ourselves, and we lay down in our bed and we walk through the past 24 hours of our lives in our mind. We know how things work. We know that pornography ruins families. We know that greed ruins marriages. Racism destroys humanity. Addictions destroy the body. Gossip erodes self-worth. Pornography, greed, racism, addiction, gossip are just all other names for Barabbas. It's the people's choice. And it's our choice. And it's a choice we have to make. Who are we going to choose? I know who I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose Jesus. I'm going to choose the one who was whipped by the Roman soldiers. I'm going to choose the one who was spat upon by 71 members of the Sanhedrin. I'm going to choose the one who promises forgiveness. The one who promises love and kindness and gentleness. And there's one more reason why I'm going to choose Jesus. I'm going to choose Jesus because he chose me. I believe you should choose Jesus partly because he chose you. See, one time he said to the disciples, you did not choose me. I chose you. Do you get that? He chose me. When he could have chosen a brand new Tesla, he chose this rusty old broken down Ford Taurus. You gotta love a God like that. I choose Jesus. It's your turn now. Pick one Jesus or Barabbas. Coming to this table is a choice. Coming to this table is our choosing Jesus Christ. It is our choosing to honor our spouse. It is our choosing to love our children. It is our choosing to obey our family. Coming to this table is a choice. Jesus chose us, and this is our opportunity to choose him.
Remember with me, if you will, the night in which he was betrayed. Remember how he took the bread and how having blessed and broken it, he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in like fashion, after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup. And having given thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink ye all of this. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that I call us all to our tables and to remember. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Hallelujah. Amen.